Hello, Greg McMurphy again. Uh, we're talking about transformer feeder sizing, and this is video number two. We left off just about done with the primary, talking about the equipment grounding conductor. Just to close that out, we had calculated um, overcurrent protected device on the primary side using primary protection only to be a 70 amp breaker and we were going to be using conductors, if I'm not mistaken, of number 6 AWG THW. So with a 70 amp breaker, looking for our equipment grounding conductor, table 250.122, directly from the table, this column says rating or setting not exceeding, not exceeding, uh, okay, 70 is less than 100, so we will use a number eight copper for our equipment grounding conductor. That would be our equipment grounding conductor. That would also apply to the any bonding jumpers, say the flex needed grounded on the primary side, uh, 250.102D for uh, load side equipment bonding jumpers would drive us to the same table. Okay, that takes care of the primary, I believe. Let's move on to the secondary side. The secondary conductors, you know, conductors always have to be sized to carry the load. They also have to be protected in accordance with their opacity. So, you know, in most scenarios, and in this one certainly, the main breaker size in that downstream panel board will drive the conductor size. So we look at the, we're dealing with the tap rule 24021C, one of the tap rules, either the 10 or 15 foot tap rule. And um, really it says these conductors will terminate in either a piece of equipment whose rating is not greater than the conductor's opacity in the case of the 10-foot tap rule, or in the 25-foot tap rule um, in a single set of uh, fuses or a single set of overhead protective devices, a single breaker that will limit the conductors to their opacity. So we look at the breaker size and that's it. If it's a 100 amp breaker, we need 100 amp wire. If it's a 150 amp breaker, we need 150 amp wire. And there's no next standard size language allowed. It specifically addresses that in the tap rules of 24021C. You are not allowed to apply 24024B when applying your tap rules. So, you know, in short, 150 amp breaker means 150 amp wire. 100 amp breaker means 100 amp wire. You get the idea. And I'll get us up to our root tables and maybe we can take a look at our uh, opacity table. So that 150 amp breaker would take a one aught conductor. 100 amp breaker would take a number three um, and on down the line. 70 amp breaker or set of fuses would be you'd need 85 amp wire number four, right? None of the next standard size language. Our grounded conductor, uh, this is a separately drive system. The grounding of separately drive systems is covered in 250.30 and we'll be talking about grounded systems. Right? So there's a grounded conductor. That's the grounded system conductor. It's a neutral, if you will. Um, size it to fit the load. Right? You sort of you need to know the neutral load. If you don't know, if you're the same size as the phase conductors, you'll, you're certainly good to go. And that's really pretty common anymore in three-phase Y systems especially. Uh, for reasons outside the scope of this discussion. Um, 250.66 gives you a minimum, absolute bare minimum size. So let's go back and take a quick gander at that. 
if we had our, say, 100 amp wire, 100 amp breaker, number three copper feeding that panel board, then oops, I'm going the wrong direction here. So if we have our number three conductor, we would uh, 250.30 would send us back to 250.66. Number three um, is actually, gosh, two or smaller. So number eight copper grounding electrode conductor. If we had a up to a one aught copper, it would take a number six copper. And that doesn't matter. It would make no difference what the grounding electrode system was. Once you get up to 2 odd or 3 odd ungrounded service entrance conductors, or in this case separately drive system ungrounded conductors, then when you have a number 4 copper from the table, then if you have a driven rod um, grounding electrodes, you really only have to go to number 6. If you have a ground ring, well, you minimum size number two, so four is okay, concrete encased electrode, uh, maximum size required is number four, so we're, if we have some driven rods, you might have a choice to make here if you get up to two odd or three odd, but anything one odd or smaller, just follow this table. Um, keeping in mind it'll have to be run, uh, that conductor will have to be run, protected from physical damage which in a situation like this might mean as simple as stapling it to the wall so people don't uh, trip on it and, and uh, cause problems down the line. Um, this particular picture sort of looks like bad workmanship um, and would probably be red tagged and have to be redone. Not really protected from physical damage. But sizing wise, go off table 250.66. Your supply side bonding jumpers. And that people sometimes freak out about that. The supply side they're talking about is the supply side of this secondary panel board. It's when you're looking at 250.30A, supply side bonding jumpers are bonding jumpers on the line side of these conductors that are tap rule conductors, where you have your overt current protection downstream. Um, it's like bonding on the line side of a service that's uh, based on 250.66. So your supply side jumper, uh, bonding jumpers, anything needed to, we're also going to have to bond the case of the transformer. Uh, probably uh, that bonding may happen down, the bonding will happen wherever the grounding electric conductor is attached. Uh, once we bond the neutral and the ground together, We'll have a white wire for the neutral and a green wire or bare wire for the equipment ground, and they'll be run separate. So that uh, supply side bonding jumper sized off to 250.66, just like the neutral was as a minimum. System bonding jumper is also sized off of 250.66, unless it's a pretty darn good sized transformer, which uh, we aren't going to get into right now. So look at our table, these are all the same size. System bonding jumper has to be uh, that connection between the system grounded conductor and the equipment grounding conductor have to, has to be made at the point at which the grounding electrode conductor is attached to the system. So in this separately drive system, if the plans and specs say system bonding jumper in the panel board, that's where your grounding electrode conductor goes, or vice versa. If the grounding electrode conductor is called out to go into the panel board, that's where your bonding jumper belongs. If the specs say put it in the transformer, that's where your bonding jumper belongs. And, uh, you know, if you have a choice, I'd put it in the panel board because it's way easier to maintain in the future. Um, that is going to put us um, at the end of another video, uh, video number three will be the closeout, and hopefully this is being, uh, this is proving useful for you. Um, I'll see you at the next video.